one of the challenges integrators have with selling IP video is the fact that video is a bandwidth hog. When you're selling to a security company, you're going to put something that you're selling, when a security company is selling to a customer, and they're going to put the video onto the customer's network, the IT department is going to get involved, and right away the, the IT company is going to say, not on my network, you're not putting that video, because it's the same reason they don't allow their employees to sit at their at their PC and and watch uh, March Madness and all bam bam the video is a, it takes a lot of bandwidth so you have to come up with methods to to get around that and one of the ways to do that is to move a lot of um, capability to the edge. When we say the edge, it just means a device that's sitting out on the sitting out on the network. Um, and I, an IP-enabled device, as you call them, IP um, appliances. Video actually fits that model very well because an IP camera really is nothing more than a it's a, a computer with a lens. So it's 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 taking this video and digitizing it and processing it. And because because the video is digital, you can do whatever you want with it with a computer. So if you can use the intelligence that you have on the edge of that network to process that video and only send video that's important to you upstream for whatever action, be it preventive or forensic, you're, you're saving a lot of money by doing that. Uh, I like that right now. That's nice. Distributed processing and intelligence is a natural extension of convergence. Open interfaces and platforms make it easier to move once centralized functions, such as recording, storage, and analytics, to cameras and encoders at the so-called edge of the network. The year-to-year -year decline in the cost of processing and storage only fuel this trend further. This was more than evident at ISC West in March. Texas Instruments introduced a security camera system on chip for full high definition resolution with a coprocessor for analytics. Video IQ unveiled a line of megapixel cameras with 500 gigabits of storage, enough to hold two months of 1080p recording at five frames per second. What happens when you decentralize? is you reduce the risk of the entire system suffering catastrophic failure. And when you decentralize, you remove all the bottlenecks in the system. You remove the networking bottleneck. You remove the storage bottleneck. And you remove the processing bottleneck for video intelligence. And by putting everything at the edge, you can build very smart devices that scale linearly whether you install one or a thousand. And when we talk, for example, to Axis, which is, is doing a lot of work on, on, the, uh, on the CPU side of the cameras, I hear them say that each time they bring out a new generation of chips, they probably triple the, the performance in the cameras. And that obviously also means that they want to use that performance for, for additional intelligence in the camera. And, you know, there's been talks now for its storage, which will use some of that, that extra performance with the storage capacity in the camera. But you'll also probably see increased amount of intelligence in the camera, like analytics that we've been talking on for years, either being edge or server storage or server based. We are likely to see more analytics to be out on the camera to take advantage of the performance you'll get from the increased uh, CPU power on the cameras. We now have more processing power on our wristwatch than the original supercomputers of 20, 30 years ago. And so the cost of the, the processing power will trend towards zero. So it's really a matter of, of who is actually giving security value to the industry, and those will be the key players. Now you've got five processors in That's in correct. We have five processors in the camera. And about, I guess, how much processing power all told is that? Well, it's the equivalent of, of more than five servers inside the camera. And, and but when processing, intelligence, and storage are distributed, it forces changes in the way networks are designed and managed. This is no less true for video surveillance as it was for IT. We talked to open systems VMS companies such as March Networks, Milestone Systems, and Avigilon, as well as storage solutions provider Pivot3 for their perspectives on how intelligence at the edge affects functions at the center. Certainly there, there is a, a, almost a lockstep between the capability that you're building in the edge devices and, and the back-end software to, to truly enable 
some of those intelligent uh, functions. Uh, I mean, a lot of the, the things that we're introducing uh, in this show are around intelligent edge devices, including a concept that we call shadow archiving, that enable you to uh, ensure the re reliability and the resiliency of, you know, of your video when the network connection between the camera or the encoder and the VMS goes down. Um, that allows you to retrieve that video from SD memory in, in those cameras or encoders and then synchronize that back into your VMS system. So obviously there, there needs to be a fairly tight connection between um, the capabilities in the edge device, the intelligence to perform those functions, as well as the policies that get uploaded uh, or directed from the VMS system. And now what's going on in the market is that we see a continuous move or a more interest in moving towards edge storage solutions which from our world is, is a, a, a change in how we develop our solutions because we come from an environment where we know basically exactly where our video recordings and our data is located in the network. Now we move into environments where you have increased performance in the cameras and you put the storage in the cameras which will put us more into a distributed uh, storage environment. So what does that really mean for us? That means that when you have cameras with storage on it, we need to build intelligence into our systems that will allow the operator to say, well, I don't really care where the storage or the data resides. I just want to see this as a continuous stream, whether it is from a camera or from my central uh, storage. You, know, you tie in things like cloud computing. You don't necessarily need to um, use a big centralized server to archive all that video. It's, you need to have the intelligence in your in your application to understand where that content resides, uh, under what premises or rules that video is captured and stored, uh, how it's aged, you know, how you deal with you know, various analytic or third-party events, and, and manage it in that, fun, in that fashion. And I think you're absolutely right that over time, um, you know, the, the whole notion of, of you know, a, a DVR-centric model or a, a centralized storage model will, will change into more of a, a virtualized pool of storage. You know, what we see is that there's going to be storage all throughout the system. Uh, you know, anybody who's talking about any sort of system at scale today, storage is probably six of the ten words that they talk about. And so we're going to see all of these. We'll see storage at the cameras, where it makes sense to have local storage in a camera environment. We're going to see storage on servers, to the extent that you want to have local recording that's going to be accessible and be highly available. Very important point I'll come back to in a minute. And then in larger centralized systems, maybe a casino or prisons, airports, seaports, in those cases you may have hundreds or thousands of cameras in a local area environment. There you've got the land bandwidth, so bringing video into a centralized storage. Now Pivot3 certainly focuses on those large central solutions and now with our new Minibank product on the more distributed solutions as well that could be more for retail markets, financial markets, or even for corporate enterprises. What we're doing at, at Vigilon is moving, digitizing the information at the camera, moving that information to the storage uh, that resides in the server that's typically distributed around a campus environment. Typical campus might have, let's say, five to ten cameras within one particular uh, building, and then we would store all of the information by way of our high definition stream management at the server that's located within that building. And then the magic of JPEG 2000 and high definition stream management allows you to selectively move that information and that forensic value across the network in a progressive compression manner. So we're not moving the entire file, but we're only selecting the information and transmitting that across to the workstation for display purposes. It is becoming much more like IT networks, and you can say that is also the benefit because you really take advantage of the different components you have in, in the system. And if you look at the CPU or the power you'll get from hundreds of cameras with strong CPU processing power in a network, you actually have a really strong um, performance-based network. And why not take advantage of that and use that distributed uh, performance you have with the cameras? Now, what we need to do from the VMS world is obviously to make that close tie into that distributed network so we will still provide the benefits of taking this back to the central part of it and add our, our, our clients and, and management applications to, to monitor but also manage this entire network in the best way. This is Stephen Titch reporting for Security Squared at ISC West.